gamers. Today we're making everything you need to know about up acid. So I have done everything you need to know about French, English, Mongo, and Rus. And now we are on to Abbasid and hopefully I get to do the new sieves by the time the season three releases in Ottoman and Malian's release as well. So again, this is not a build order guide. This is me explaining all the sieve bonuses, giving you some tips and tricks for the sieve. Uh, and then also going through all their unique upgrades, unique mechanics and unique units. Kind of like a beginner to, you know, to uh, a real gamer, you know, like Diamond. So Abbasid is technology, camels, and city planning. It has a two out of three difficulty. I would probably say Abbasid is one out of three. Uh, probably up there somewhere with, with French and English. Um, I don't think it's that complicated of a sieve. It might seem complicated because you got to connect your houses, but um, it's not that complicated in my opinion. So... 17 unique technologies that benefit camels, military, religion, economy, and trade. That is from the House of Wisdom, which is their basically landmark. That's the first thing to note. Abbasid does not have multiple landmarks like other civs. They only have two landmarks. Their main TC and House of Wisdom where they upgrade Ajabs. And Abbasid does not require villagers to construct their landmarks. They just upgrade and then it upgrades on its own. So that's kind of their, their benefit. The downside of it is, is you cannot speed up your Ajab. So if an Ajab takes X amount of time, that's how long it takes. You cannot put more villagers to make it faster. That's it. So that's the disadvantage of it. An advantage of it is that you don't require workers to build it so that you can continue mining or gathering uh, whatever you were on. Uh, camel units reduce damage by 20% to nearby enemy horse cavalry. So this also works on like elephants, on other camels, on, on scouts, anything that has a tag cavalry, it will reduce 20% damage. The radius is about three to four tiles, I would say, and it works as an aura. So if your camel is in the fight, all their cavalry will have reduced damage. So obviously if you if you play against any civ that has any kind of cavalries, you do want to go for um, you do want to go for that. Mills constructed near berry bushes uh, will basically increase the food capacity by plus hundred. Every berry has 250 food. And if you put a mill, then suddenly all the bears will have 350 food. And this also works in team games. So for example, if your ally is gathering berries, you can just create your mill next to their berries and their berries will get buffed uh, plus 100 food per berry patch, which is very, very cool. And they also have faster gathering from berries, 30% faster compared to the other sieves. It's the same with Delhi, but they cannot gather from boar. So if you kill a boar with Abbasid or Delhi, or Ottoman or Malian, the boar will simply disappear. Uh, so you cannot gather from it, but I guess that the compensation for that is the berries have more resources um, on it. So when it kind of goes down, it's it's more or less the same thing. And like I said, you do gather faster from berries. So it's Delhi and Abbasid both are one of the sieves that benefit going to berries uh, a lot earlier than some of the other sieves because berries has the lowest gathering rate, but not for them. Berry carry capacity is increased plus three. So this does exactly what it says. Instead of carrying 10 resources and start, it carries 13. So it's kind of like a mini wheelbarrow, but just for berry patches, further kind of buffing that. Length traders for Abbasid are 33% cheaper. Uh, Self-explanatory, really. Docks are 50% cheaper, so Abbasid uh, dock costs 75 wood. So in a lot of the water maps, you can open two docks with Abbasid if you want to, uh, or you can just stay one, it's up to you. Age up without the need for villagers, this is what I was talking about earlier in the House of Wisdom. And another unique mechanic for Abbasid is they have a golden age, and you reach golden age, um, there's three of them. By constructing buildings in the House of Wisdom Influence, increasing resource gathering, research times, and production speed. So let's get into the game, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what's going on. So you know how it works, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build all the production buildings, build the units, and show you, and so you know what's going on, and what's it all about. Uh, yes, elephants do count as cavalry. So... Their houses are normal, and this is the Abbasid thing you will notice straight away. So, right, oh actually I, I can't see it there. So you see this influence zone, 
if you connect buildings like this, this is how you enter Golden Age. The more buildings you have connected, the better bonuses you will receive. So right now, the wood, the lumber camp uh, is not connected to the TC, but if I build a house or barracks or anything in between, it will connect to one another. So I'm gonna build House of Wisdom, which you can see right now, we cannot enter Golden Age. In order to enter Golden Age, you need House of Wisdom. Uh, you can build in a Dark Age and it costs 50 wood. And this is where you age up to um, to Feudal, to Castle, to Imperial. So I'm going to build that really quickly. There we go. So now you can see there's a number zero right here. And if you mouse over it, Tier 1 is 10 structures, Tier 2 is 20, 30 structures, and Tier 3 is 60 structures. So Tier 3 is only reachable really in Imperial. Tier 1 is reachable early Feudal. And then Tier 2 you reach somewhere in Castle, or if it's a long Feudal you can reach it there. And you will see uh, the bonuses that they have. So Villager Gathering Rate for all resources is 15% increased. Gathering Rate uh, plus Research Speed 15% with Tier 2. And then tier three, you get 20% gathering rate, research speeds, and production speed from your military building. So it's very, very, very good. And that's why it's very important. Like if I were to make a TC down there, you do want to slowly connect it like this to that TC to make sure that all your buildings are connected. Uh, if they're connected, they're going to show like this in like this orange, yellow color, whatever you want to call it. And if it's not connected, it's going to be white. So if you put it here, you can see that this house is not connected so you need to put another building in between when it says this little plus that means it's in the uh, in the area so with that being said i'm gonna build a little barracks here i'm gonna build a house gonna build a mining camp and i'm gonna build a mill over here so it's in the influence radius and right now you can mouse over here and see how many buildings you have i'm just gonna build a couple of more so that although we should have it in a second here so we gather the the first uh we open up the first golden age so you guys can see what that looks like there it is golden age activated and we'll pop up in the middle of your screen so now you'll see the number one and now all the villagers get a buff i think this is just a text issue it says 10 percent it's 15 percent so it got buffed so yeah um in the mill, you got the classic upgrades, nothing new, nothing special, same thing with mining, same thing with lumber camp. I'm also gonna go make a couple of docks. As you can see, there's 75 wood. So we're gonna make a couple of those. And I'm gonna age up. So this is how the Abbasid aging up works. Uh, you can, you have four wings, even though there's only three ages you can age up. Abbasid can actually age up another time which you're still gonna be in imperial but you will unlock more things so we're gonna go with the economic wing because that's what you usually go with and you'll see it takes one minute and 45 seconds to age up and again you cannot speed this up in any way uh, and as you can see the villagers can still continue to gather resources you don't have to pull them you don't have to stop them but it does take a while because other sieves can age up a lot quicker if they put more villagers to uh you know, to build a landmark. So, House of Wisdom has 2,000 health, but it will increase uh, over time uh, as you age up. So I think in Imperial, it has like 22,000 health, maybe even more. Uh, and the reason for that is so that people couldn't like snipe your landmarks. If you got 2k health, you would instantly lose. Another thing that I forgot to mention is if you build buildings or have buildings within the influence of House of Wisdom, Buildings within influence gain plus one fire armor. What fire armor is, when melee units attack, they throw torches. So instead of doing 10 damage per torch, if you try to torch Abbasid buildings, they will receive half of that damage. So if you've ever uh, noticed that Abbasid buildings are a lot harder to burn, uh, that's why they got plus five fire armor. And now you know. So, um, we're gonna talk about the spears, we're gonna talk about their ships in a second. This is on the test realm, so depending on when you're watching this, the new patch, the new season, season 3, is not released yet. I have access to it right now to practice for the Red Bull tournament. Um, so depending where you watch this, you will notice that the ships are changed. And this is the new water rework system that was 
put in. Um, the only unique upgrade that Abbasid has for their ships is take take musts, tech musts, and uh, the only thing that it does is increase the movement speed of military ships plus ten. I think this is ten percent. Um, other than that, they don't have anything, uh, you know, super unique. Their Bagla has the same stats like other Hulk ships. Their Doe has the same uh, stats as Arrow ships. And their Explosive Doe has the same stats as Explosive ship. And at the end, they have Xebek, Hebek, Xebek. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, it's anti-structure ship. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. They don't really have uh, anything else unique regarding water. Now, that we have aged up. Let's check what else we have. So like I said earlier, if you make a TC, let's say here, and that's where you're going to expand with Abbasid, always try to build your next buildings towards that location. So like this, I would build an archer range, and then I would build stables right here, and I would connect that TC to everything else. So now that TC has plus fire uh, armor on the fire attacks, but also you are slowly uh, moving up to that uh, tier 2 for 30 structures, which again is very very important to get. So again, that's why Abbasid might seem complicated with this building layout, but it's not really. Like, just build buildings in the influence of, of House of Wisdom. And obviously that extends, so you can extend this, you know, wherever, right? Um, Alright, so we're not in Feudal, so let's check what we have in Feudal. I'm gonna upgrade Spearman. I can actually make a couple of more uh, buildings here. So it's easier to show you guys. And I'm gonna make a little blacksmith right here. To have that as well. So, first thing that you will see here. Uh, there we go. First thing that you will see is the Abbasid have a unique spear upgrade. And this probably makes their spears... Uh, probably this makes their spears the best spears in the game and what it does is it increases the attack range of spearmen by 100% so usually a spearman can just attack another unit in front of it so if there's another unit right here the spearman attacks that and if there's a spearman behind it you cannot reach but with Abbasid spear once you upgrade it basically your attack range will be uh, you'll be able to attack from above your units against enemies. So if there was a unit here, both of these spearmen could attack. Where other sieves, they would get stuck and they wouldn't have enough surface area to attack. So Abbasid spears, very very good, very very nice. This is uh, another uh, unique thing and unique unit about Abbasid, which is the camel archer, and this is the aura that they have. Camels reducing the cavalry uh, ho it says horse cavalry units, but pretty sure it reduces elephant damage as well. Am I crazy? I'm 99% sure it reduces uh, uh, elephants as well. I might be wrong on this one, actually. You never really make camels uh, against elephants, and elephants are not really made anymore. That's something I gotta test. Horses only? Does it not affect other camels? It doesn't reduce elements. Okay, I actually did not know about that. Wow. I always assumed it's all cavalry, but it says specifically horse cavalry units. Alright. So, you still want to make them, obviously, against every uh, every cavalry uh, sim or playstyle that's based. That's really interesting, I didn't know that. So, what does Camel Archer do? What does Camel Archer counter? Camel Archer has plus 12 damage versus light melee infantry so like melee infantry is uh musafari warriors it's uh donzos and it's spearmen from any sieve so uh light melee infantry men at arms are not light they're they're heavy infantry so uh they don't do bonus damage against that but they do 24 damage per hit against spearmen so they do quite a lot of damage and uh they can kite the units as well because they're pretty fast and you can raid with them as well uh, are elephants cavalry? Yes, elephants are cavalry, but apparently they don't get the damage reduced from camels. Interesting. And Lengsmecht. That's right. That's true. They're also light in for sure. Uh, so yeah, they're very good to deal with spearmen. Uh, but they're also, and, and the other units that they counter, but they're also very good to do some harassment with. Or just mix them in your army to um, reduce the cavalry damage. So, 
Uh, other than that, they got Horsemen and Scouts, which is pretty standard in Feudal. Uh, in Blacksmith, this only gets unlocked into Castle Age, but they have Camel Handling, which increases the movement speed of Camel units by 15%. It does what it says, it increases the movement speed of Camel Riders and Archers. Um, other than that, they don't have... I'm gonna build a market right here. But they don't have anything else regarding buildings or units. Now, whenever you upgrade House of Wisdom, you will unlock tech here, okay? So this tech is not accessible. This is the economy wing. This is military wing. This is, um, uh, what is it called? Culture wing. And this is trade wing. So right now, we have upgraded economic wing. So we unlock these, these three upgrades. Except this one is in castle, this one is imperial. So these first ones are Feudal Age, this is Castle, and this is Imperial. So if we were to tech up into Castle, this would automatically unlock so that we can upgrade it. So the reason why you go economic 99.99% of the times is because of this upgrade, fresh foodstuffs, and it reduces the cost to produce villagers by 50%. Needless to say, I, I don't know. I don't know if I gotta explain why this is good. But if you're on two TC, you're producing two villagers at a time for the cost of one villager. So this is very, very good. It's one of the best upgrades in the game, and what makes Abbasid so, so strong and feudal because you can just mass units without actually, you know, waste, quote unquote, wasting um, food resources on your villagers. So you will see now when my upgrade finishes, the villagers will be 25 food, which is crazy. Now, let's go with the economic, or sorry, culture wing next. That's what you usually go for. And what culture wing allows you, and the main reason you go for the culture wing into castle, is because of this upgrade, preservation of knowledge. Um, and what it does is it reduces the cost of all technology by 30%. So once you get this, uh, any upgrade, whether it's economic upgrade or military upgrade, it gets reduced 30%. So... It's really, really nice. It saves you a lot of resources. Um, and the reason why you don't go for military wing, uh, this is what you unlock with military wing. It increases the health of all infantry by 15%. Usually in castle, at least at a high level, uh, a lot of the fighting comes with cavalry in castle. Like you want to open knights or camels and kind of harass your opponent before they wall off. So this doesn't get a lot of value, but this is incredibly, incredibly strong in the... Uh, in the super super late game so if you look now house of wisdom has 7000 health it got plus 5000 for going feudal and once we go castle it will increase uh even more and you guys can see here uh that traders for abbasid cost 40 40. so again they are what was it 30 percent cheaper 50 percent cheaper 30 percent cheaper i think it's 30 right they're 60 60 yeah 30 percent cheaper uh compared to the other sieves um 33 percent right and now when the upgrade finishes you'll see that house of wisdom will gain even more uh health and again this is just a mechanic to make sure your landmarks don't get insta sniped because you don't have any more landmarks that's it you cannot build more house of wisdoms um you know that's pretty much it and now it has plus 10,000 health so it has 12,000 health total and if you research, we're going to research this immediately, both the uh, fresh foodstuffs and preservation of knowledge, you want to get immediately, so you can get the, the value out of it straight away. Uh, another thing we have unlocked from uh, Castle Economic Wing is improves uh, villagers gathering rate from farms by 15%, so that's very nice. Obviously, you get that once you transition to farms or start transitioning. And then from the Culture Wing, the second upgrade, aka the castle upgrade that we got, is keeps heal nearby units for plus two health every one second. And as you saw, that upgrade cost just got reduced. So this is now 5240. And if you look at the economic upgrades, this costs from 50 food, 100 gold. This costs 3570. That is dirt cheap right there. It also affects blacksmith upgrades, as you can see. So. That's why you go culture wing into castle because it's just very, very good. Uh, we unlock men at arms into castle and then, you know, the normal spearman stuff. Again, this upgrade you can get in feudal. Um, in castle, in archery ranges, uh, traders are out. We'll send them to trade there. A couple of more. 
You can upgrade the camels to camelor, uh, to camelor, to veteran camel archers. And you also have, uh, obviously, access to crossbows. And in stables right now, you have access to lancers and camel riders. Let's make a couple of those. We can get this upgrade, camel handling, like I told you guys earlier. And what else do we have? We have a keep that also, by the way, gets the armor. Uh, plus five fire, fire armor if you build it with an influence. We have a uh, siege workshop, we'll build two. And then we have a mosque as well that we'll build right there. So you'll see in a second, camel archers are about to get upgraded and camel riders are about to come out. By the way, camel archers are one of the best uh, units in the late game. They only cost food and wood and they actually deal quite decent damage against everything not just the light infantry that they counter but they deal quite good damage against a lot of stuff so right now veteran camel archers do 14 damage plus 14 against melee light like melee infantry so 14 damage for base damage is really high so late game you can spam these and it will trade really really well against a lot of things uh, on the other hand, we got Camel Riders. Camel Riders also have the aura uh, against the horse cavalry from the enemy. And they have zero armor. So both camels, by the way, they got zero melee armor and zero ranged armor. Obviously, you can upgrade it. What Camel Rider does is it counters cavalry and just like uh, other ca uh, cavalry units, it counters siege as well. So it has bonus damage. So the downside of camels is they don't have charge attack. So I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to find... Uh, we'll go to this boar all the way. They don't have a charge attack. So obviously, you know, lancers, for example, or knights, when they do a charge attack, they do a, like, a lot of damage and then they start auto attacking. They don't have that. Now, they do cost 180 food and 60 gold. So they're a little bit more expensive on the food, but less expensive on the gold. And the reason, you know, the reason why you want to build these is they counter cavalry really, really well. Not only do they reduce their damage by 20%, but they also have bonus uh, damage against them. So they do 28 damage per hit, which is quite high. And another thing I want to notice here. Uh, let, me build, let me build Lancers. They got really high health. They got 270 health, so I'm gonna come here with three camels just to show you guys. So if I attack the boar, you'll see they don't get any speed up, they don't charge in, they just walk to it. So this is the downside of camels, but as you can see they attack really fast and their DPS is actually quite high. Uh, the funny thing is, even though they're cavalry units and they're supposed to counter archers, camels are, you know, different than other cavalry units. Uh, and they can actually die to archers pretty easily because they don't have any ranged armor. Unlike horsemen or knights or lancers where they do have armor. So if you look, lancer has 230 health, 4 armor for range, 4 for melee. Um... And camel riders have 270 health, but they don't have armor. Another uh, benefit of it is, um, if you compare the other stats, knight has zero, uh, zero, 5 to attack speed. Um, and camel rider has 1-1 one, one to attack speed. So they attack quite fast, a lot faster. So technically, you know, Lancer is stronger, but Camel Rider actually has more DPS, even against units that are not uh, the ones that they counter. So Camel Riders can actually do really well against uh, uh, ranged units. They don't have charge, right? So they're not supposed to counter it, but they will do good damage against ranged units. They will do good damage against men at arms, but they will not necessarily counter them. And again, they're a cheaper version of Knights because they cost less gold. Uh, you definitely want to mix them in, maybe not go pure Camel Rider Army or Camel Archer Army, but you do want to mix um, either of those. And you can see Horseman has, to compare Camel Rider to a Horseman, Horseman has 155 health. It is faster, it attacks faster, but it deals less damage, and it has ranged armor. So Camel Rider almost has double the health, so there it is. Now, let's upgrade to the military wing, which is what usually you want to age up 
into Imperial. And we'll check out some of the other stuff. So we got Imams, which um, I'll make a couple just to show you something. The unique deck for Abbasids. Um, oh yeah, they're, you know, other than that, their their mosques are, you know, normal. Uh, nothing, nothing weird. Now, in Siege Workshop, Abbasid has access to cauldrons, and this makes them really, really good late game uh, Civ because of all the gathering bonuses that they have, because of camel archers, because they're really good. They got spearmen, which are the best in the game. Cauldrons are the best anti-siege. Uh, and they also have a lot of good hustle wisdom upgrades like uh, boot camp, which increases the health of our uh, infantry, which takes, makes their spearmen even better. So Abbasid is a very, very, um, very, very good late game sieve, and it pretty much has everything you need. It has spammable units. You can make gold units. You can make culverins, which are anti best anti siege. And they got really good gathering rate, and they got cheap villagers, which is part of the reason why Abbasid is so good and is so played. So, once we unlock Military Wing, our House of Wisdom is gonna get, I think it's another 10k health if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we will unlock Improved Processing. So Improved Processing, villagers drop off 8% more resources. Now, this isn't... They don't mine extra 8% resources. They don't mine faster, right? They don't take... If they get 10 gold, they're not gonna get 8% more from the vein. They will just magically drop off another 8%. So, if you were to drop 100 resources, you will just get 108 um, resources dropped off instead. So, it's just a free resources, basically. So, the moment you age up to, to Imperial, you usually want to get this because it's a fast upgrade, increases the health of your infantry 50%. And then you want to get this immediately because it pays off within, I think, like two minutes or something like that. And it works on all your resources. So it's very, very good. Um, in the uh, culture wing, let's cover that. In the culture wing, uh, this is from Castle. In Imperial, you get an upgrade that is very underwhelming. Uh, it's called Faith, and Imams can convert the unit without holding a relic, but it can only target a single, single unit. So these guys can do the wall of law, but only on a single unit. And this is, I've honestly never used it in my life. And I haven't seen anyone use it. I've seen people try it, but it just kind of falls flat. This would, in theory, be good against elephants because elephants are, are big units and they cost a lot, so you could do it. But by the time you're imperial there's too many things happening for you to be converting if this was like a feudal tech or or um or castle tech if you could somehow build them in feudal i could see this being a thing and this being used but because it's imperial it's just not that great um and then from military wing what we have is this is feudal upgrade boot camp we got camel rider shields which i forgot to mention earlier uh camel riders uh, gain shields, improving their melee armor by 3. So, this is not for all the camels, this is only for the camel riders, right? R these bad boys right here. So once we upgrade that, they're gonna have melee armor plus 3, so it's gonna make them a lot, a lot better, obviously. Um, and the Imperial upgrade you get for your camels, and again, this is obviously unique to Abbasid, all of these are. Camels increase the armor of, of nearby infantry by plus two. So any camel, whether it's rider or archer, if you have them in your army, not only they will reduce the damage of enemy cavalry, but they will also give you armor to your infantry units. So we're going to get that as well to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, Abbasid keeps are normal, no unique upgrades, nothing of that sort. <clears throat> and here we go. Now camel riders got a little shield. You guys see that? little cute shield uh there is another upgrade that you unlock in imperial um i think it's in imperial i hope so increases the armor of camel riders by plus two so you can see these camel riders and camel archers kind of start as a little bit of a potato unit but as you age up they just become better and better and better and they kind of become pretty scary in the in the late game. Like I said, they're able to trade uh, really, really well against a lot of things. So, <clears throat> next thing. Um, there is one more thing that Abbasid has that is unique to them. 
and that is composite bows reduces the reload time of archers by 33 percent so they got camo archers that are really good they got spearmen that are best in the game and they also got the best archers in the game now technically english have the longbows but these guys are really really good if you get them the only issue why you don't see uh, archers from Abbasid too much is because they kind of do the same thing like camel archers do so people usually mass camel archers except camel archers can deal with a lot more things that archers can so this is how the camel riders in Imperial look like they have 320 health which is crazy plus one plus five melee armor and plus two ranged armor and then camel archers um, only have uh, or don't have any upgrades they got plus zero plus zero so the upgrade in stables that you upgrade right here only increases plus two plus two armor for your camel riders and it makes them quite a bit uh tankier compared to compared to what they uh, what they were um now before i forget i'm gonna mention a couple more things here so number one thing, uh, as you can see, oh, it, it's plus 5,000 each uh, age up. Let me build a uh, university. So before I forget, um, I told you guys you can age up the fourth time with Abyssin. So if I get trade wing, I'm going to be able to unlock these upgrades as well. So no matter which uh, age up you go for, you do not... You know just abandon the fourth one you can still get it it costs the same amount as normal imperial 2.4k food 1.2k gold and once you unlock this you will be able to get the trade upgrades which i'm going to show you in a second now madrasa which is their university uh it has all the normal upgrades that they have i'm going to get this one and this one Actually, let me build another one. Uh, just to show you, so if I go court architects, it's also going to increase the health of the House of Wisdom. So you'll see it's going to have a buttload of health. Um, and another thing that I want to research is Elite Army Tactics increases the health of all melee infantry by 20% and their damage by 20%. So, we already got the House of Wisdom upgrade for 15% health, as you can see it here. So, Spearman has 104 health plus 14. I'm going to upgrade it actually to Imperial. And once they get this upgrade, it's going to add on top of that. So, Abbasid Infantry is 35% bonus health, which is crazy. Crazy, crazy good. Uh, so, while we wait for upgrades to finish, also, there is a visual when Abbasid is getting their age up going. So if you're very good with it, you can actually see the building changing. Uh, an actual wing is being added to the building and you'll be able to see when they're, uh, when they're aging up. It's gonna age up in three seconds and boom. And now it has 22,000 health and we just finished the upgrade for the building health. So House of Wisdom total has 28,600 health, which is a lot. It's a lot of health. It's a lot of health. But again, they don't have any other landmarks, so they kind of have to have that, right? My Spearman got 126 health right now, and they're about to get upgraded with the upgrade for the HP again. And now they got 152 health, which is crazy. Crazy, crazy amount of health. Now, one more thing before we reach into these, because I almost forgot it. Uh, Abbasid can build siege on the field. So any other Civ can build uh, rams and siege towers on the field. They require a siege engineering upgrade uh, in order to do so. But if you look, Abbasid does not have that upgrade. And the reason Abbasid does not have that upgrade is Abbasid unique thing in Feudal is also that they don't need Siege Engineering to build rams. So if you get Tower Rush with Abbasid, the only thing you need is a couple of spearmen or a couple of archers and you'll be able to build rams. Now, in Castle, Abbasid can also build Springles and Mangunos on the field. So this is similar to Mongols. If Mongols research uh, improved Siege Engineering, they can make Mangles or Springles or Trebuchets. 
Abbasid can only build Stringles and Mangonels, but they can build them the moment uh, they hit the field. So crossbows, archers, spearmen, and men-at-arms can do this. Obviously, you can do it with cavalry. Um, pretty sure and Kinaneers can as well. So that's another unique thing about Abbasid. And I almost forgot to mention that, which is a very, very important thing to do. Um, obviously, if you get biology... Uh, it will also increase the health of the camels, which I'm going to do right now to show you guys. There's the, there's the mango. There are the culverins. We can access those. And the last thing there is left to discuss with up acid is the trade wing. The trade wing is something that you'll see quite a bit maybe in team games. You're not going to see it too, too much in one-on-ones because it's not that difficult to prevent the trade and kill your opponent. So their feudal trade uh, wing upgrade is trade. Traders and trade ships also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25%, the base gold value, and is set at the market. Excuse me. So we're going to get that. Second upgrade, which is the castle one, grant plus five armor to trade traders and trade ships okay i mean if you have enemy units in your trade line that is probably not a, in a good position and then the last one is really really good spice roads increases the gold income from traders and trade ships by 30 percent so if you look right now the traders are only returning gold now 52 gold now if you click at a market you can see here toggle resource so we can toggle uh can you not trade stone second anymore? Is that a stealth change they made? Wait, what? This wasn't in the notes. They said it before? Oh, okay, I missed that completely. So, you can set the second resource. <clears throat> I set this one on food. And now because you're setting it in market, so you can get either food or wood second. So this worker, right now the market is set on wood. So every resource that comes to the market um, will be returning gold plus wood. Now, once we get this upgrade, Spice Roads increases the gold income. Because the secondary resource works off of 25% percentage of how much gold you're carrying, it will also give you more secondary resource. I'm going to stop these guys right here. This is about to finish in 5 seconds. No civ can trade uh, stone with unique upgrades. Okay, I actually completely missed that in the patch notes. So you can see, 1352. So if we send these guys now, once the upgrade has finished, you'll see... Yeah, Mongol, yeah, Mongol still can, but that's their unique upgrade, right? They will be carrying 17 wood because it's 25% off of 68 gold. So you do get secondary resource and you get a lot more gold. Now, if you look at the distance, this is quite far and you're only gathering 68 gold. And this is another thing that you might not be aware of. In season three, uh, the traders, instead of costing 75, 75, they cost 60, 60. Abbasid traders are 33% cheaper, so they cost 40, 40. But they also bring, I think, someone can fact check me on this in the stream 40 percent less resources so this is why the trading is not as crazy um in the old patch this would be a, a lot more gold close to 100 per trip but now it's um it's 40 percent less so they nerfed trading a little bit but they made it cheaper to start with because i think they're trying to make it so that people kind of open with uh open with trade mongols can't trade stone um uh, they can with an upgrade they can't send stone but they can get stone uh they they also get percentage of how much gold they're carrying over because their traders also uh trade or gather food and wood uh depending on how many traders you have so yeah i'm trying to think if there's anything else but i think we have pretty much covered abbasid i upgraded the uh the biology so if you look camel riders with full upgrades got 384 health and if we got all the blacksmith upgrades they were they would have eight melee armor and five range armor so again very very good and they got almost 400 health which is crazy yeah i mean if we were to unlock tier three by the way the only thing we would get is production speeds in military buildings is 20 percent increased 
research speed are increased by 20% and villagers will also be gathering 20% uh, faster for all resources up from 15% um, but that's it like you don't need to necessarily you know see that to uh, to believe it just trust me all right with that being said I think we have pretty much covered uh, covered Abbasid I'm trying to think if there's anything else but I don't think so Abbasid is a macro sieve it starts off kind of quote unquote slow but once it ramps up with one or multiple extra TC's the villagers get produced uh, for half the price 25 food per villager and then you'll be able to just mass so so many units um, and you will be able to completely overwhelm your opponent they have a lot of bonuses for their gathering stuff they got a lot of military bonuses uh, their camels are really good their camels are really good in the late game overall it's one of the better sieves right now as of recording this on uh, uh, October 6th who knows something might happen in the future they might be a lot worse I don't know but right now they're a really good sieve uh, a macro sieve a late game sieve a castle sieve a feudal sieve they're good they're good yeah yeah this this upgrade I mentioned earlier it gives 15% movement speed to both the camels um, that is pretty much everything you need to know about Abbasid. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. The next everything you need to know about will be Delhi. Uh, after that, we'll do Atri in China and then Malians and Ottomans. I'm going to try to time it so it's just before the patch comes out. So you guys have fresh everything you need to know about Malians and everything you need to know about Ottomans as well. The reason why I'm putting those last, by the way, is because the game is not out yet so there might be some more changes to ottomans and malians and for that reason i think it's best to just wait for as long as possible and then create those uh, those guides yeah and also i'll be releasing all the builder all new build order guides for season three for every sim and just so you guys know because a lot of people have asked me this on twitch if there's a lot of water maps on the ranked ladder i will also release uh build orders for water uh, maps for every sieve potentially uh, and that's it if you guys are watching this on YouTube I want to thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed today's video once again if you're watching this on Twitch let's keep going